become very busy. Go away. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. So if the kid doesn't get hurt, Duke goes all the way through. If he does get hurt, they get beat. Oh, hi. I'm just working on my uh, it's bracket time. But we're not doing a real show today. I just got Bill Koch, my pal from the Projo, in here to talk about the, the, the world stops on Wednesday night in front of the tournament, don't you know? All right, let's do a show. Good evening. Let's do the brackets. I'm not doing any news today. No news. I'm sick of it. I want to chill. I'm overworked and stressed. So this is my oasis. Bill Koch is here. Don't flash through yet. Put up the bracket that no one can read. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do every year. Uh, how are you, my friend? I'm well. How are you? Tis March Madness. Tis. I always tap Koch's brain on this stuff. He's kind of reviewing my stuff right now. And here's what I don't, I haven't figured out. Do I do a bracket the same way for every bracket? I'm, you know, so it's the all, all for amusement only, of course. Forget the idea that there's a national number out there that there's $5.4 billion this March Madness season spent on investing in the outcome of the tournament. That's billion with a B. With a B. Yes. Five, think about that. Right. $5.4 billion. I have no role in that whatsoever. This is all for amusement only. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure you don't either. None. Uh, but, you know, I'm in this little pool, amusement only. I'm in this little pool, probably three or four pools. Is there a logic to just doing it differently, like a different pool, different, or you just like make some picks and let it ride? I would have as good a chance of winning a pool as Anita would, to be fair. Oh, no. A little, you should have seen Anita try to put this show together. She's like, what's a bracket? I didn't say that. You said what's a bracket. No, I did not. I did not Eric, did that. she say what's a bracket? What did you say? Not that. <laughs> but quite often, <laughs> quite often, what happens in this sort of thing is that a little bit of knowledge can be very dangerous. You pick what should happen. March Madness is the exact opposite of what should happen. That's right. why it's called March Madness. And that's why we love it so much, because the first two days of the tournament, you get the Cinderella stories, you get the small schools against the big schools. There's nowhere to hide anymore like they do in the non-conference schedule. You put them all out there on the floor and you let them decide it. It's great theater. Yeah. Um, so... Talk to me about the state of college basketball before we get into into the picks and everything else. Turmoil. Turmoil. We'll talk about Rhode Island and, and PC a little bit later on. PC laid a big egg last night as if, the, the, as if did. they didn't even want to be there. It was tough. Uh, yeah. um, and we'll talk based on the high school basketball stuff, which was fun this year. Uh, but the state of college basketball is in turmoil right now. Yeah, it's a difficult time for the sport. Uh, you have the shoe company trials going on right now. Uh, you know, assistant coaches making plea deals to try and stay out of prison, paying for the services of players to be funneled to their school. The current shoe company on trial is Adidas. The federal government is going to keep digging until they find a way to get to Nike or to Under Armour or to everybody else. And as you know, Dan, you've been around the sport for a long time. Recruiting isn't always the cleanest business. Hmm. This is not to be confused with the new college scandal where we have coaches who were paid to feign the idea that students were going to be on their rosters. Um, one alleged, uh, the tennis coach at URI, who looks like he's alleged to have done this while he was at Georgetown, uh, and then other administrators across the board. That's a whole different scandal. Entirely separate, yes. Yeah. College is a controversy. You know, its expense, I think, has put a lot of pressure in a lot of places. The spending being what it is, the money available now through the TV contracts that you've seen just explode, whether it be on Fox Sports or now uh, the American Athletic Conference just announced a multi-billion dollar deal with ESPN this week, just the money available that's generated by TV raises the stakes, literally and figuratively. Well, the, the money in sport and then the money in just general uh, practices and tuition costs for, for students. So we've got, we've got all sorts of 
you know, college has become a, an economic conversation on, on a whole bunch of different plateaus. But mm. look, we feed into it. Um, you work you know, journalistically. I do. You know, uh, as kind of more, more of a hobby than anything else. But I'm, you know, on the payroll at URI and do the public address. I've always been a college basketball junkie. Really can't find myself even interested in the NBA until playoff time anyway. Right. You know, a soured Nick fan. Never even want to, you know, it's like the, the longing for yesteryear. That's never coming back. Right? Sure. Uh, but the college game has become, I don't know, um, you just hope and pray that every team that you're interested in in whatever school you went to is running a clean operation. At the same time, you demand that they win. And so therein lies the problem. In terms of the NCAA, they're fine with these three weeks being odds. The curtain gets pulled back the other 49. We hmm. see how the sausage is actually made, how players are actually recruited to certain schools, how coaches have no loyalty to schools and will jump to better jobs, bigger jobs for more money, uh, but they expect the players to remain loyal. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult calculus. The NCAA is, is outdated, you know, the way it was set up. It's time to have a meaningful reform of that organization like in some what? way. Like the players shouldn't necessarily be compensated as a rule, but for their likeness they should. Zion Williamson should get a cut of his Duke jersey sales. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, if someone from URI, say Fats Russell, wanted to go sign some autographs for 10 bucks a pop, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. But in terms of just paying players a salary, mm -hmm. a stipend, the romance of the lower schools, the Bryants and the Manhattans and the Siennas of the world, financially they would not be able to compete. So there, there is a balance point here that could be struck. It's just going to take a lot more creativity than most of these people have, quite but frankly. It, but, but even in the even giving, while structurally it makes sense that if your if your name is being marketed slash exploited for profit. Mm -hmm that you get a piece of it makes sense. But at the same time, if I'm a blue chip player deciding what school I want to go to, I'm now going to factor in what the marketing system is the school has built in for generating revenue on my name. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to make that calculus when I decide to go to school anyway. So to your point, the Bryants of the world and Browns and the Ivy and Siennas and Albany in the MAC conference, uh, who don't necessarily have, A, the system, or really the product to market in that way, are still going to be in trouble. The big schools are always going to get the best players. So that's just the way it's set up. They have the most to offer in terms of facilities and NBA pedigree and whatever else. But if you have a guy like Ja Morant, who is at Murray State, who is under-recruited, who all of a sudden now is going to be a lottery pick, you're telling me that a Ja Morant Murray State jersey wouldn't be cool? Mm. Anyone could get a Christian Leitner jersey or a Grant Hill jersey. Any Duke fan could get those. But how rare, how limited edition, how special, how unique would a John ja Morant Murray State jersey be? You're still going to have some guys who slip through the cracks who all of, a, all of a sudden become big superstars. Steph Curry is another good example at Davidson. There's no reason that Steph Curry, after Davidson made that Elite Eight run, couldn't have been able to profit off his number 30 jersey being sold by Davidson. And in this era of online sales, Davidson could put that product out online and it could be distributed. Simultaneous with their, their stay or afterwards? Both. Why not both? And, and the, some of the thought on that is you could create an escrow account for athletes that they couldn't access right away. So the, the payments would be a little bit more legit, a little bit less immediate. Is it that we have a real black market out there in terms of this kind of stuff being sold? And if you, if you made the players commissionable on it, it would become more legitimate? Well, what's being sold are the players' services initially. Uh, and that's where the shoe companies would come in. In the summer, on the circuit, you would have middlemen for agents going to assistant coaches and saying, hey, I need 100000 bucks, and you can get this player. That's the black market at this point, and it's funneled through cash and through your cousin twice removed and through the assistant coach's wife so that there really is no quote-unquote paper trail, but there is one. That's the sort of slush that's going on now. I'm talking just in terms of legitimate above-board marketing. If Duke is a Nike school, which they are, mm. there's no reason that Nike couldn't sell Zion Williamson jerseys, open an escrow account for him, keep that money so that when he becomes a professional, 
Then you give it to them and say, here you go, Zion, you made some money off your career. Is there any traction for that conversation? It's been discussed. I, I think the methodology and actually putting it together would be a, a pretty massive undertaking for the NCAA and all the schools. To try and get these people in a room and, and actually agree on something that doesn't involve the financial bottom line is difficult enough. Once you introduce money, it's going to be even more difficult. Uh, interesting conversation. When we come back, we will get to picks. Stay with us. All right, so this kid is like all everything. He's a one and dunner. Duke has sold out. Shashevsky has become a one and dunner program. I guess that's just the way you keep up with the Joneses, right? Need to win games, right? I guess. Well, look at me. I've got him into my final four. As I'm, 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 I'm literally doing my bracket as as we speak. I have Buffalo going to the final four. Buffalo's a good team. I have Buffalo. Being the story, two of the best the games, final, final two four. of the best games of the round of 32 could be in the bottom half of that West region. If you get Buffalo to play Texas Tech and you get Nevada to play Michigan, those are elite eight caliber games. Okay, so let's put since we started there, let's put the West up. It doesn't matter East, West, North, or South. They actually don't start in, in anything that even reflects the name of the region until they come back to the regionals. Right. Uh, but can we put up the West? Thanks, Eric. Uh, so I think most people with a large screen TV can see that the the games in the West. Uh, that you're excited about are what? Nevada and Michigan, Texas Tech and Buffalo. Now that would require each team to win a first round game. But right, I have Nevada beating Florida, Michigan beating Montana. Correct. Right. Yes. And I have Michigan beating Nevada. I have Nevada winning that game, but you there do? will be NBA players, future NBA players all over the floor in that game. Right. Whether it be the Martin Twins for Nevada, Jordan Caroline for Nevada, uh, Iggy Brasdakis for Michigan. Great, great talent in that game. Okay. Well, uh, and, well, so so you who, who do you have coming out of that? I have Buffalo coming out of that bracket. I have Buffalo upsetting Michigan after Michigan beats Nevada. I could certainly see that. Uh, they're I, really good. They're really good, really good, really tough. Um, lost their conference to uh, tournament. It happens. It happens. Gonzaga lost theirs too. Right. Um, I have Florida State winning that region. You do actually. I do. You got Duke winning the East. Uh, you, Michigan State. You have Michigan State upsetting Duke. I do. Yeah, I have a couple. Is this kid going to stay healthy? If he's healthy, he I think he rolls it. If he's not healthy, aside from Zion, Duke has a couple major red flags. First, they're the worst three-point shooting team in the field. Three thirty-eighth in the country, they shoot about thirty percent from three. Generally, teams do not win the NCAA tournament if they don't shoot the three well. The other thing with Duke, obviously, is inexperience. Their players average about All right. two I thirds of a year a of experience. Cots just got me off Duke. They're in the bottom ten in the nation in experience. So if you have guys like R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish down eight points with six minutes to go, they forget about Zion and start chucking threes. They could lose, and a team like Michigan State is not going to let them get to the offensive class. That's Tom Izzo's hallmark: rebounding toughness. I see Michigan State getting through there. Okay. Uh, on the south side, you like Virginia all the way through? Virginia is the only team in the country that is in the top 15 <coughs> in three-point shooting, defense, and turnover rate. They're for real this year. And they got something to prove. Having oh, been knocked out, not knocked out last year in the first ever 116 upset. Right. That's embarrassing. I took Tennessee to win that region my lone reservation Tennessee about, to beat Virginia? Yes, oh, in the Elite geez. Eight. My lone reservation about Virginia is they play the slowest pace in the country, 353 out of 353. If they get behind, it's very difficult for them to come back. They're so efficient on both ends, offensively, defensively. If it's a half-court game and they're ahead, very difficult to beat. But if they're, if they're down, say, 10 points with eight minutes to go, it's hard for them to speed up, mm. force you to turn the ball over rush it on offense. It's very difficult for them to play that way. See, this kind of clinical knowledge is so important. Of course, what always happens is Anita wins the whole pool. It happens. It's just, it's just it, right? Not really. You're so smart. I got a little bit of knowledge to be dangerous to myself. She doesn't know a thing about it. Doesn't even know what a bracket is. And she fills this See, whole thing out and wins. Like, look look what I just did to you. Uh, I got you to cross out Duke oh, you with, with a little bit of knowledge. You did. She's going to take Duke because they're the number one seed and they have Zion and it might be the one player who she actually knows. And Duke's going to win the national championship. Or she's going to pick, she's going to take a look at the and uniform colors and she's going to decide based and, on that. And we lose. Who the national champion is, right? Wait until it breaks. Yeah. See, wait till it breaks. And we lose. She doesn't like me right now. That's how that works. Uh, on the Midwest. She shouldn't like me. I was the one who started picking on, on her. On the Midwest, on the Midwest, you know what? 
my my love hate relationship with Calipari is coming out. I'm, mm. I got him going to the Final Four. For folks who don't know, Dan has long standing history with John. I actually admire him tremendously, but he was he is a in a good way. Yeah, yeah, he's a piece of work. In he, a good way. He's a piece of work, and that's a great regional. Uh, you could have some really good games there. Kentucky and Houston would be a classic. Uh, North Carolina and Auburn would be a great game there as well. I have North Carolina winning that region over Kentucky, but I think those last three games, if they do line up that way, all of those games would be Final Four caliber games in a given year. Really, really tough. Kentucky MSU, that's who I have, based on a little bit of help from you. I have and then North Carolina and Michigan State. You do. North Carolina winning. I don't think Kentucky can win the national championship. They're a little older this year, which is a good thing. Uh, Reed Travis coming in as a grad transfer was a big thing. P.J. Washington coming back for a second year is important. Normally, Kentucky doesn't really get contributions from upperclassmen. They're probably better situated to win the tournament than they have been in, in some recent years past. All right. I just went on a flyer. I took them. All right. Brackets filled out. When we come back, we'll talk about local basketball. Stay with us. That's interesting. So focused on the big brackets, we don't uh, we don't have any uh, video or headlines on PC or URI, but uh, we certainly can talk about them. URI uh, is out of postseason activity. PC is also out after last night. First game, NIT. Not a big crowd at the dunk. It didn't no, look it like tough. it anyway. Arkansas came in with a mission and just kind of blew them up. They did. They looked it, like they didn't, the PC looked like they didn't want to be there in the first half. It was the end of a difficult year for PC from the standpoint that. They were just so inconsistent. I, I could imagine Ed Cooley being very frustrated trying to coach this team. Previous years, he's had veterans. He's had guys who have accepted their roles and excelled in them. This year, I don't know if he ever found that consistent lineup, that consistent rotation. And as a coach, that makes it really hard to sleep at night when you don't know what your guys are going to do every time they go out there. They're on a growth plane, though. They are. They have a lot of talent there, which... Most schools, when they lose, that's what you lack. This Providence team lacked some continuity. They lacked some cohesion. Ideally, you can coach that and foster that over a full off season. I think A.J. Reeves being healthy next year will, will be a big factor as well. Him going down he's in the pure, midseason. He's their most pure shooter. Yes. Right? And him going down in the midseason prevented him from ever having a realistic chance of being up to speed down the stretch. It's very hard to miss six, eight, ten games in the middle of the season and then come back like nothing ever happened. So how do you take a team that doesn't feel cohesive and bring them all back and make them cohesive? Well, they get older, for one, which is important. Uh, you'd be a lot more experienced. The freshman played a lot, whether it was David Duke it's like cohesion, or Reeves. Are you talking about cohesion just in terms of the roles mixing well or the mindset mixing well? It's a difference. Well, once you settle on roles and on your rotation, then you can get guys' minds right. You can say, look, this is what you're going to do for me. This is what we need you to do to win. Would you like to buy in? Do you want to play in the NCAA tournament? Do you remember last year when we got blasted in the NIT in front of 3,000 people in our mm. own building? Mm. Do you want to feel that way again? Probably not, because they're competitive people. So you hope to use that as a teaching tool and you move forward. Well, Cooley had a run there of NCAA appearances that were record-breaking for the school. Outstanding. Five years in a row. and. You know, a guy who is a perfect fit in that job as a Providence guy, as a motivator, as someone who built his way up from a player at Stonehill, a uh, player at Central before that. You're, you're allowed to have a step back. But, you know, the PC mentality is pretty, is pretty snobbish. I, I say that with affection. Pretty snobbish about what they expect. Sometimes. So Sometimes. And there's, there's a long rope for Ed Cooley. As there should be. A long rope. Uh, anyone suggesting a regime change or anything like that is, has lost touch with reality. Mm. If you want to move on from Ed Cooley, that would be a major, major mistake to uh, even suggest. David Cox comes in at URI and has a really difficult middle two-thirds of the season. Mm. It looked like this thing was unraveling. And then he snaps off six wins, says he's got the team back. They're all talking about how much they love him. This is your beat. Uh, what's your synopsis? Says a lot for David. They salvaged the season for him. Uh, to win six in a row at the end, to make it to the Atlantic 10 semifinals, um, to play meaningful postseason basketball. 
not something you thought was going to happen when they were 12 and 14 and losers of five straight. I think it says a lot about his leadership, his character, his players' character, that they just didn't pack it in and quit would have been very easy to do, um, particularly with the manner of a couple of losses. You get blown out at home by Dayton. You lose in overtime at home to Fordham. You know, those are pretty low moments for a program that's done a lot of winning the previous two years. Brown uh, playing as we speak at 7.30 uh, in the CBI tournament. You pay to be in that tournament, right? You do. That's, yeah, that's Brown's choice. Brown obviously thinking we have a lot of these guys back for next year. We were very Except close. their star player, Desmond Cambridge, who just left. That's a big loss. And, and someone who, regardless of his performance this season, he struggled from the floor in the Ivy League, did not shoot it very well. Uh, was a little bit selfish at times, but you never like to see talent like that walk out the door. It's very difficult to get a guy like that to come to Brown who's so it, gifted. So you ask, is it better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all Yeah. with these guys who yeah. come and go yeah. hard in the game? And Brian, Brian's got some, some, some new momentum. They do. Um, yeah, I thought they did very well this year. You know, to win 10 games, to make it to the NEC tournament uh, was a place that they didn't have a lot of familiarity with over the last couple seasons. And more importantly, I thought it was the way they played. They played really hard for Jared Grasso. He set something up this year despite a tough start, you know, despite some struggles with the roster with that Kenan Duba being out for the year with a shoulder injury. He basically played 30-odd games without a point guard. Um, he really set the culture is the buzzword that coaches use all the time, but I think we saw that in action with Jared this season. So this feels, for the most part, like a uh, little uh, of an empty experience, the NCAA tournament with nobody in it. Do we feel better next year? I think we do. Uh, I would expect to see Providence back there. There's too much talent there not to figure it out. Rhode Island's going to give it a good bit as well. They don't really lose you know, much worthwhile. Uh, but I think what you're feeling this year might remind you how spoiled we've been mm. recently on the local level. You had Providence and URI in the tournament each of the last two years. Providence alone in the previous three. Great time for college basketball. It's wonderful when the state has its own little slice of it. All right. MSU is your pick. No. No. What did you say? I said North Carolina. Oh, North win. Carolina. Over Michigan State. Over Michigan State. Yes. I got that rascal Calipari. I just think he's <laughs> going to do something great. Good for you. Uh, Red Sox beat now? Headed to Fort Myers soon. Yes. Jealous. Thanks, Bill. You got Final it. word when we come back. I think we should proclaim uh, the first week, like Thursday and Friday, like national holidays. So we get some, you're with me? <laughs> get some, we're not, nobody's getting any work done anyway. Heck, I'll even be doing this show tomorrow and the radio show like this. You know, trying to pay attention to what I'm allegedly concerned about while I'm trying to see how my brackets are doing. We need a break, don't you? I'll bring it up in the office at least, see how that flies. Good luck with your brackets. We'll get back to the real world tomorrow, I promise. And on the radio at 3 on WPRO.